if our goal in America today, if the goal of the criminal justice system in America was to raise the rates of crime and violence in this country to the highest possible level, we couldn't have a better designed system. That's exactly what it's doing. In the United States today, the richest 1% of our population owns around 40% or so of the country. That is, the net worth of America, somewhere around 40% of it is in the hands of the richest 1%. Now, America is a democracy. We have freedom of the press, freedom of speech, uh, universal suffrage or voting rights, and so on. How can the 99% of us tolerate a system that can concentrate so much wealth in 1% of the, of the population? Well, the only answer I can come up with is that we have a system going that is similar to the way the Roman Empire was able to rule a population that you know was a hundred times larger than the than the uh, government of the Roman Empire, and that was by a strategy they invented, which they called divide and conquer. We know that the uh, most powerful predictor of the murder rate throughout the world is the is economic inequality, the size of the gap between the rich and the poor. The higher the gap, the higher the murder rate. The lower the gap, the lower the murder rate. The lowest murder rates in the world are in Western Europe and Japan, where the gap between the rich and the poor is lowest. I could also include the other English-speaking democracies, uh, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Of all the developed countries on Earth, the country with the highest gap between the rich and the poor is the United States, and the U.S. also has murder rates that are by far the highest in the, among the developed economies. Our murder rates are average five to ten times as high as those of Western Europe and Japan and the other English-speaking democracies. Now, having a high gap between the rich and the poor is in the economic interest of the very rich, by definition, because the higher the gap is, the more, in other words, the more of it those at the top have. That doesn't mean there's a conscious conspiracy to do it. What I'm saying is, what we're talking about here is a conflict of interest. And incidentally, violence and crime don't tend to generally threaten the very richest because they, they live in neighborhoods that have less crime and they have more police protection, and they have private security arrangements. Uh, uh, we spend far more money in this country on private uh, security uh, arrangements such as burglar alarms and private uh, uh, security forces and so forth than we do on our police forces and our public uh, forms of, of protection. So the rich aren't threatened by, by violence and crime either. So it's easy that, that the, the interests of the public at large might get lost. And we would go ahead and do things that stimulate crime and violence without those who are really, you know, in positions of power, particularly having a lot of motivation to deal with it. 